Hi guys, Simon here from the Triple F and welcome to a brand new show called the Never Forget series where I profile very important, prolific footballers from all over the world who mostly plied their trade pre-1960s. The reason I'm doing this is because there are a ton of players most fans have likely never heard of and there's a lot of World Cup winners, goal scoring record holders and legendary figures who most will struggle to identify. Hopefully you enjoy this show but most importantly you never forget. This first episode takes a look at football's greatest loss, Duncan Edwards. The reason I wanted to kick off the Never Forget series with Duncan Edwards is because TT99Football56 requested it by commenting on the Jimmy Greaves Under the Floodlights episode on the Triple F YouTube channel. But also because my knowledge of the player is very limited, I was so intrigued to find out more about him. His name certainly rang a bell, but telling you what kind of player he was, how important he was and the impact that he had for Manchester United was certainly beyond me. The first thing that springs to mind when mentioning the name Duncan Edwards is how he is most certainly football's greatest loss. Edwards was taken from us at an extremely early age of 21 years old, as he was one of the passengers aboard the Munich air disaster. So many of his admirers claim that had Edwards lived longer to see out his career, we'd be talking about one of, if not the greatest footballer to play the game. Edwards was born in the Woodside district of Dudley on the 1st of October 1936. He made several appearances for his school and district teams in the region of Dudley before signing for Manchester United in 1952 at the age of 15, although contrary reports declare that he signed a year later on his 17th birthday. Those reports claim that the Manchester United manager at the time, Matt Busby, and or coach Bert Wally arrived at the Edwards' family household just before midnight in order to secure his transfer to Old Trafford. His signing was well sought after as the likes of Wolves and Aston Villa were frustrated to see him sign for Man United. His Manchester United career got off to a bang as he made several youth level appearances which contributed to them winning the first ever FA Youth Cup. Edwards would have made it to the final, but to his elation, got called up to the senior side at the age of 16 years old, making him the youngest ever player to feature in the Football League First Division. Alongside the likes of Tommy Taylor, Billy Whelan, Eddie Coleman, Jackie Blanchflower and Dennis Violet, Duncan Edwards featured prominently in a group that would be collectively known as the Busby Babes. The 1954-55 season is where he fully established himself as a regular within Busby's Man United side. Having made 36 first team appearances and scoring 6 goals that season, his impressive form saw him make his senior England debut in April 1955. Aged 18 years and 183 days made him the youngest ever England debutant since the Second World War, a record which remained unbroken for 43 years until Michael Owen made his debut in 1998, aged 18 years and 59 days old. If his 54-55 season was impressive, then the 55-56 season was simply remarkable. Despite missing two months due to a serious bout of influenza, his 33 appearances helped the Red Devils claim their fourth First Division title, and they did so in style as they were 11 points clear of runners-up Blackpool. During the following season of 1956-57, he not only helped United clinch a consecutive back-to-back -back title, but he also clocked up over 100 appearances for the club, all at the age of 20 years old. He also made seven appearances for the club's debut in the European Cup, the equivalent of the Champions League. A regular for the England team at this point, he made a strong contribution during the qualification of the 1958 World Cup and was even under strong consideration to succeed Billy Wright as captain. He made his final appearance on English soil during a nine goal thriller which saw Manchester United beat Arsenal five goals to four at Highbury and he played his last ever game of football when the Lancashire outfit took on Red Star Belgrade in the JNA Stadium on the 5th of February 1958. In what is one of football's greatest tragedies, Edwards passed away after suffering fatal injuries aboard the flight home. He was among the 23 people, 8 players and 3 staff of Manchester United to tragically lose their lives. 
you're interested in coming on the show for an Under the Floodlight special to talk about your favourite player or manager, please email the triple F2021 at gmail.com or DM the triple F84 on Twitter. All contact details will be in the episode description. Hope you're all keeping safe and thanks again for listening to the Triple F. Although I hate to make comparisons, I find it's the best way to paint a picture for the younger generation and those who have no idea of how good Duncan Edwards was. He was an incredibly strong young man who would shrug off players off the ball with consummate ease. In terms of strength and physique, the best comparison to make would be a Micah Richards or a Didier Drogba. He was also an immensely accurate passer of the ball. He could spray long balls and let's not forget the weight of the ball under all conditions back then onto a sixpence much like Steven Gerrard or Andrea Pirlo. Another similar attribute Edward shared with Gerrard was his powerful long range shooting and his ability to score a goal. The fact he has 25 goals for club and country playing most of his games in defence is simply remarkable. And lastly his reading of the game was immense. It would be no exaggeration to say he could play and master almost any position primarily a defensive midfielder, but he was often used as emergency cover for various positions all over the pitch. The first player that springs to mind who had a similar understanding is the legendary Johan Krauf. Edwards was a player that wouldn't be out of place in today's game. A teetotal athlete, which was very rare back then considering tobacco and lager was commonplace in those days. He was a shining example both on and off the pitch. A very grounded and private individual who enjoyed fishing outside of football. His stamina was one of his greatest assets and saw him clock up a remarkable 169 matches for Manchester United and the senior England side all until the age of 21 which was most likely a result of his humble and healthy personal life. The best way to describe and relay how great of a footballer in person Duncan Edwards truly was is to read out statements made by his contemporaries. Jimmy Murphy, former Wales manager and assistant manager to Matt Busby, of whom oversaw Edwards' Manchester United career, once said, When I used to hear Muhammad Ali proclaim to the world that he was the greatest, I would always smile. The greatest of them all was a footballer named Duncan Edwards. On the 26th of May 1956, Edwards scored a cracking goal for England versus West Germany in an international friendly at the Olympic Stadium Berlin. Captain of England during that game, Billy Wright noted, The name of Duncan Edwards was on the lips of everyone who saw this match. He was phenomenal. There have been few individual performances to match what he produced that day. Duncan tackled like a lion, attacked at every opportunity and topped it off with that cracker of a goal. He was still only 19, but was already a world-class player. And lastly, close friend and teammate to Edwards, Manchester United legend Bobby Charlton CBE once remarked, he was the best player I've ever seen and the best footballer I've ever played with. I always felt I could compare well with any player, except Duncan. He was such a talent. I always felt inferior to him. So, I hope you've enjoyed this profile on one of football's biggest losses. A tragedy not only for the devastating way in which he lost his life, but a tragedy for the sport itself. We truly lost a footballing gem on the 6th of February 1958. I not only hope that this has informed you as to what type of player and person he was, but most importantly, I hope you never forget Duncan Edwards. Thank you so much for listening to The Triple F. If you could please drop a like on our Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, that would be massively appreciated. Hope you're all keeping safe and thanks again for listening to The Triple F.